How does God speak to you? How does God speak to us? Pay attention to you who say this. I would like to know God's language. I would like to know how to hear God's voice and understand what He wants to say to me. Pay attention. I will give you three ways that God speaks to us or at least he tries to do. God speaking is one thing, us listening is another. It's not there are only three, there are many ways. He can talk through whatever he wants, through a donkey, if needs be. But I'm going to speak about this three. But before speaking about this three, let me tell you something. One way that you will certainly not listen God's voice. Let me give you an analogy. Do you know why you, I, are not listening to the samba music? Why we are not listening to a classical or electronic music? because we are not in sync to a source that produces this type of songs. If I want to listen to any type of these songs, I will have to look for it. I will have to search for the artist, the channel, the source, the platform, Wherever there's access to that, I'll have to look for it and only then I'll be able to listen to that type of music that I want to listen to. But why? Because I looked for it. I synced with it. So you don't listen to what you're not in sync with. You won't listen to what you're not in sync with. Sometimes you can be in an environment that there's some sort of noise, voice or songs, but you're not listening to that. Actually, this happens a lot with husbands and wives, especially with husbands. The wife is speaking and speaking and he is not in sync with her voice. Soon she asks, she asks, have you heard what I said? And he says, Huh? And many marital fights start like this. The husband, it's only with his body present, but his mind is not in sync with his wife's voice. Even though he's listening, he's not hearing. So you understand what I'm talking about. For you to hear any voice, you need to be in sync with it. And it's no different with God's voice. You must intentionally seek to hear God's voice. It's that fine. This is the first thing you must understand. If you're not in sync with it, you won't listen to it. So let's go. Three ways in which God talks to us. In the book of Job, on chapter 12, it says like this, But now ask the beasts, and they will teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, and the fish of the sea will explain to you. You can see that God speaks to us through the animals. Jesus said this differently when he spoke about anxious people. Pay attention. Anxiety is not something new. In Jesus' times, people lived anxious. And Jesus is speaking about anxiety, giving the cure for anxiety. He guided people to look at the birds of the air. Look at the little birds. They don't work. You don't see any bird coming out with a small suitcase or a backpack 
in their backs going to work. You don't see that. You don't see any bird worried about what they will eat, worried where they will shower. You don't see that. You see birds playing, tweeting. You see birds eating without nobody feeding them. Nobody feeds them, but they eat. Because God gives them, in one way or another, their food. So Jesus said, look at the birds of the air. You can notice that they don't work. They do no job with wages. But still, their heavenly Father feed them. Solomon also said, go to the end. Use luggard. Go to the end. Consider them having no captain, overseer, or ruler. They work with organization. They keep food in the summer, preparing themselves for the winter. So, as the Bible says, ask the beasts, look at the animals. God left hints and lessons throughout his creation. The animals is one way that he speaks, but he also speaks through nature, his creation. Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens is one of the greatest voices that speaks on God's behalf are the heavens. You know that the human being, when they are seeking hope, when they seek courage, they look at the sky. When they are downcast, isn't that curious? When they are downcast, they look down. When they are looking for hope, they look at the sky. Isn't that curious about the human being? Any culture, any nationality, the human being likes to look at the sky. Why do we look at the sky with hope, as if someone who is seeking for a answer? Why? Why is that? Why is this in the human being? What not to look at their feet? What not to dig a hole and look at it? No, we look at the sky, because here is written, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So God is speaking. Did you know that some scientists, scholars, propose that the world is the work of an explosion, of a great explosion, by chance. And they say that all this is just a accident, coincidence. The fact that there is life on Earth or exists the way it is, is just an accident, it's coincidence. But did you know that if you changed one law of nature, if you changed a fraction, a fraction of the laws of physics, the law of gravity, if you changed just a little of any law of nature, there will be none of this that exists. Did you know that nature is programmed with more precision than a Swiss watch? That everything that there is works with harmony. It works precisely in a way that it works the way it does. In other words, the chances of this being an accident, dear friends, as they say, you need more faith to believe in this than in a creative mind behind all this. So the nature speaks, the stars, the sea, 
the mountains, the human body. When you look at the human body, you study the human body and its wonderful shape that is made, designed, that it was designed, you say it is not possible. This is no coincidence. So nature speaks. This is the second way. And the third way, the main one, most direct way God speaks to you is through his word. He left a word. Do you remember when we were children, teenagers, when we liked someone, you had a crush on a girl or a girl in us, on the boy. So we used to write letters. I wrote many love letters, even to Christiane, to Christiane, and she has kept them until today. In the past, today we don't do this anymore, unfortunately. Many don't even know. They don't know what it's like to write, only typing, but not to write with their hands. Anyway, so we wrote love letters. We would live in a hidden place for them to find. It was so nice, so nice. And the Bible is this love letter from God to us. He left what a letter, what a letter, a great letter declaring his love, his words, his mind, who he is, who he thinks of us, who we are, what he intends to do, how he wants to marry with us, to live with us, to take us to live with him. He left this letter that many have at home or at their phone. If they don't have, they have easy access, but they don't worry. You know, I've never received a letter that I haven't opened or nor any girl that I sent a letter that they haven't opened. But the human being, unfortunately, does not open the Bible to read it, to meditate on it, and to know what God wants to talk to them. So you ask yourself, why doesn't God talk to me? If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.